In the last presentation, we saw the basic of your SR flip flop, and also at the end, we were having our truth table that I made here. Now, by using this truth table in this presentation, we are going to find out the characteristic table and the excitation table for SR flip flop, which is a very important part of the flip flops, and especially when you are having your flip flop conversion. So, let's move to it. The truth table is familiar to you. In this, we are having the clock. Whenever the clock is low, whatever be the values of S and R, the Q and plus one. Now, let me tell you about this Q and plus one because till now we were using Q and Q bar. Actually, Q and plus one is your next state, okay? And Q N is your present state. What I mean by this is that whatever be the value stored in the flip flop is your present state. And now, when your clock changes and the inputs S and R changes, depending upon their values, the next state will be determined. Okay, when clock is high and S and R are zero zero, we know that it is the memory. It is the memory, and by memory I mean that the next state is going to be same as the present state. So the next state is Q N plus one, and the present state is Q N. And in this case, you can see that Q N plus one is equal to Q N. Similarly, when clock is zero, it's always the memory, and by memory I mean the next state is equal to the present state Q N. So this is what you have to keep in your mind. And similarly, when clock is high, S N R R one one, it is invalid. We don't use this configuration in SR flip flop when S is high and R is also high. So by using this information we are going to make our characteristic table. First let me tell you what we have to find out in this characteristic table. We have to find out the value for your QN plus 1 because QN plus 1 is your next state and next state is dependent on your input. Your input is SR and also the previous state. So it's very clear that the inputs to this characteristic table is QN, S, R and the output is QN plus 1 because I just told you that the next state is dependent on the SR, the two inputs as well as the previous state. So let's find out the values for QN plus 1 by using this truth table. There are three inputs to it, therefore eight possible combinations. So let me first make it 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. It's a very interesting table. You will find out. You will enjoy evaluating the values for QN plus 1. And also the excitation table will be evaluated by using this characteristic table. So it's important. Now we are having the possible combinations. Let's try to find out the values for QN plus 1. The first case when S and R both are 0, 0. We already know when S and R are 0 and I'm assuming clock is high for all these operations. It cannot be low definitely. The clock is high. When S is 0, R is 0, it's for memory and by memory I mean that this next state is equal to the present state. So present state is what? Qn and Qn is 0 for this configuration. So Qn plus 1 is equal to Qn and Qn is 0. Okay, so this is how we have to do for the rest of the cases. When S is 0, R is 1. When S is 0, R is 1. Qn plus 1 is 0. So simply 0 here. When S is 1, R is 0. Qn plus 1 is 1. You can see from this case. And when S and R both are 1, it is invalid. So I will put a cross mark here. Again, when S and R are 0, memory. And in this case, QN is 1. So QN plus 1 is also 1. And 0, 1. Because S, R are 0, 1, 1, 0. And the last case is also invalid. Because S and R are 1. So you have just evaluated your characteristic table. A very simple one if you know the truth table. And you can see that until and unless you know the values of your next state depending upon S and R. You cannot evaluate your characteristic table. So first remember the truth table. Now we will move to our next important table. That is your excitation table. Excitation table and in excitation table the two inputs are qn and qn plus 1 and the two outputs are s 
and R. So we have to find out the values for your S and R depending upon the values of QN and QN plus 1. So let's see for the first case when both QN and QN plus 1 are 0. We have to see from this characteristic table. I have already told you that the characteristic table is determined by the truth table and the excitation table is determined by the characteristic table. That's why the truth table is the basic block for this tables. So QN is 0 for these two cases and also QN plus 1 is 0 for these two cases and I can see that the value of S is always 0 so I can write S equal to 0 but the value of R is 0 1 so I can write cross that is R is our don't care now let's see when QN is 0 and QN plus 1 is 1 so I will do it in different color here QN is 0 QN plus is 1 and in this case S is 1 and R is 0 so S is 1 and R is 0. Now let's move to the next case when QN is 1 and QN plus 1 is 0 and uh, for this we are having this case QN is 1 and QN plus 1 is 0. In this S is 0 and R is 1 so S is 0 R is 1 and uh, for the last case when QN and QN plus 1 are 1 which means this case and also this case the green ones in this R is always 0 you can see but S is changing from 0 to 1 so S is our don't care and R is 0 so this is our excitation table you need to remember this thing because you are going to use it frequently in the flip-flop conversions and also in the counters so just remember these things they are very important one more thing that you have to do here is to find out the value of qn plus one so how you are going to do that you are going to make uh, eight cell k map because three inputs are there so we are having a eight cell k map let me make it and in this eight cell k map you are having your inputs as qn s r zero 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 one 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 zero 0 1 here now let's fill this k map for q1 plus 1 0 0 1 cross 1 0 1 cross okay now let's do the pairing my first group is this combining two don't cares and two ones I will call it 1 and my second group is this one okay and I will call it Two. So let's find out what is the value of QN plus 1. It is 1 or 2. So from the first group I am having what? S because R is changing from 1 to 0 and QN is also changing from 0 to 1. So it is S. And from the second group I am having QN and S is 0 and it is 1 and R is 0 and remains 0 so S will be neglected and I am having R complement so this is the value for QN plus 1 similarly you can find out the values for S and R do it by yourself and uh, this is all for the characteristic table and the excitation table of SR flip-flop when we do the flip-flop conversion and designing of the counters you will find out that how these tables are used so see you in the next presentation when we will discuss the D flip-flop